Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Criterion. In this edition we take a look at the Moldovan-born Ukrainian-based director Kira Muratova and her films joining the collection That's Brief Encounters and The Long Farewell. Kira Muratova died in 2018 and has only now come to be recognised as one of Eastern Europe's greatest directors, after decades under the radar. Soviet censors saw her work as elitist in its experimentation and nihilistic in depicting society as a madhouse and restricted it from being seen by the public. Arthouse canon tastemaker biases kept this hard to classify female director sidelined. Abrasive, asymmetrical and repetition based, Kira had a taste for the absurd and grotesque. Her films are no easy ride, but they are audacious, distinctive and visionary. Muratova's origins, like her films, defy straightforward reduction. She was born in 1934 in the city of Soroka, then Romania, now Moldova, to a Romanian Jewish mother and a Russian father. After graduating from Moscow Film School VGIK, she moved away from the Soviet power centre of Moscow and took up a directorial position at the Odessa Film Studio. There she lived and made Russian language films in the Ukrainian port city for much of her life, keeping the surname Muratova after her brief marriage to fellow director Alexander Muratov, her studio colleague. In an eclectic work of over 20 films spanning more than half a century, the most popular being The Ascenic Syndrome from 1989, is her best known and arguably greatest masterpiece. It emerged from a phase of more unbridled creativity made possible by the new cultural openness of the late 1980s. It was awarded at the Berlinale, but its in-your-face rule-breaking, replete with cursed obscenities and full frontal male nudity and black humour dissection of moral bankruptcy, proved too much even for Perestroika. It was the only film banned under Gorbachev, which sums up her maverick impulse, which is never to make nice, when she could provoke discomfort instead. Following two features made with their then-husband, Alexander Muratov, Kira announced her unmistakable aesthetic with her solo directed debut concerning two women whose lives unexpectedly intertwine. Brief Encounters is one beautifully realised scene after another, and in the film Muratova gently defines a love triangle concerning a city planner played by herself her geologist husband, legendary Soviet protest singer and satirist Vladimir Vazotsky, and the young woman from the countryside, Nina Rushlanova, hired as their housekeeper in Odessa. Both Brief Encounters and The Long Farewell contain a single and striking narrative hook. Indeed, what might in Hollywood terms almost be called a high concept. In The Long Farewell, we have a teenage boy who has quit school and has become very close to his flirty, divorced mother. He breaks her heart by announcing his intention to go and live with his father. But first, let's take a a longer look at Brief Encounters. In Brief Encounters, Muratova plays Valya. She's stressed by her workload and she has to manage new apartment blocks and persuade their prospective tenants that they will have to wait if the flats are not ready in time. Flashbacks reveal her erstwhile unhappy relationship with the handsome Maxim, played by Vladimir Vazotsky, who, like a smug troubadour, strums his guitar once given to him by Nadia, Nina Rushlanova, a former waitress from Out in the Sticks who once had a fling with him and is now Valia's housekeeper. Now that same guitar, its strings symbolically detuning and twangingly snapping, now hangs on Valia's wall. But just wait one moment. Surely the two women are going to discover their awful shared secret. Surely Maxime is going to show up again, leading to all manner 
of painful or farcical revelations. And surely this disclosure will have dramatic implications for the all-important relationship that the two women have with each other. Well, not quite. This is a Kira Muratova film. Everything is oblique and indirect, even uh, the ending. Now, the long farewell's central character is Yevgenia. Now, she's a woman who, like Valya, is a functionary, and she's employed as an English translator in a government agriculture department. She's humorously and tenderly played by Zinaida Sharko, almost like a Soviet Dora Bryan. Skittishingly gratified by a certain gentleman admirer, she has a strong sense of herself as an attractive person, bolstered by her close relationship with her son Sasha, played in the film by Oleg Vladimirsky, who has made her feel needed. She is deeply hurt by Sasha's growing sense of mutinous independence and his interest in girls and his desire to live with his father, who isn't too keen on that idea. The story here orbits unhurriedly around in a wide arc, taking in all types of set pieces and intimate dialogue exchanges before closing the circle and resolving the central tension between mother and son. Censorship battles were sometimes impossible to win in Russia. Muratov was so upset with edits made without a consent to her film Among Grey Stones from 1983, which was based on a story by Vladimir Korolenko about his childhood and grief, that she officially renounced the film, and it was released under the fictional Russian everyman name Ivan Sidorov. A number of Muratova's films ostensibly adhere to a Soviet-approved worldview, but her vivid and expansive imagination bursts beyond such ideological frameworks. An ethos of communal production determines the mud and cement setting of Getting to Know the Big Wide World from 1980, in which Muratova frequently refers to this film as being the favourite of her own works. Now, Muratova continued making movies well into her 70s, often focusing on women and children as transgressive forces. And in her penultimate film, the dark fable-like melody for a street organ, that's from 2009, two orphaned siblings, that's Alyona and Nikita, take a train to search for their father at Christmas. The streets of snowy Kiev are a melancholy carnival, populated by grotesquely strange and predatory adults. They are the face of a gluttonous, grasping consumerism, run rampant after the transition to capitalism, and its myriad new forms of hell. Now, Muratova's movies do not yield their meaning easily, or indeed do they repay attention with a conventional emotional payoff, and so they require closer viewing. But there is a fierce individual intelligence at work here. Brief Encounters and The Long Farewell come to the Criterion Collection on Blu-ray, and the release contains two separate discs with the following special features. We have a new 4K digital restoration of both films with uncompressed mono soundtracks on the Blu-ray. Interviews with scholars Elena Gorfinkel and Isabel Jacobs archival interview with director Kira Muratova, an essay written by the film critic Jessica Kayang, a regular contributor to Criterion, and the cover art for the disc is by La Moutique. Brief Encounters has a running time of 96 minutes and it comes in a 137 by 1 aspect ratio and has Russian dialogue, and The Long Farewell runs for 94 minutes, again in 137 by 1 aspect ratio and Russian dialogue, and both come to the collection on Tuesday the 13th of August, a spine 1229. In the next edition of Let's Talk Criterion, we look at the film set in China, that's The Last Emperor, with Peter O'Toole and John Lone, and it's directed by Bernardo Bertolucci, coming to the collection as an existing spine with a 4K UHD upgrade. So until then, from me, as always, it's goodbye, and above all, good Criterion viewing.